Workers were doing some repair work when they stumbled upon an astonishing piece of history. It's a spring day in Philadelphia and workers are toiling away to lay a new water line beneath the city. However, as they dig under the centuries-old streets, they stumble across an unusual sight. At first glance, it appears to be little more than the weathered trunks of old trees, but a passerby knows the incredible truth. On May 3, 2017, a team from the Water Department were hard at work updating the water system that lies beneath Philadelphia, the largest city in Pennsylvania. Then somewhere along Spruce Street in the Center City District, the workers made a strange discovery. While replacing the city's old pipes with a new system made from ductile iron, the men uncovered what appeared to be a cache of old logs. However, although the find was a little out of the ordinary, they didn't immediately think that it was anything worthy of close investigation. After all, Philadelphia was founded in 1652, and it's one of the oldest cities in the United States. Some sources, in fact, claim that it's difficult to conduct any kind of construction work beneath its streets without stumbling across some buried piece of history. Thankfully, however, Julie Snell, a tree surgeon, just happened to be passing by on her bike, and when she saw what the workers had uncovered, she knew that something was up. This didn't look like a normal tree, she said in a May 2017 interview with the Washington Post. Coincidentally, Snell had recently attended a talk by Adam Levin, a historian with the Philadelphia Water Department PWD. More than 200 years old, this historic organization was founded in 1801, only one year after the city lost its status as the capital of the United States to Washington, D.C. Since 1998, Levin has been working with the department to compile a history of Philadelphia's lost waterways. Yes, in collaboration with local historical societies and libraries, he spent almost two decades building up a picture of the various streams that run underneath the city. Now when Snell spotted what had been uncovered on Spruce Street, she remembered something that Levin had mentioned during his talk. Intrigued, she then contacted him and explained what she had seen. And soon Levin confirmed her suspicions. A fascinating slice of Philadelphia history had indeed been revealed. As it turned out, what the workers had believed to be old logs were actually something far more intriguing. They were in fact the remains of an old wooden infrastructure system that first carried water beneath the city more than two centuries ago. After visiting the site and viewing the discovery for himself, Levin delved into his trusty archives to find out more. Eventually, he discovered a report that had been made by the Watering Commission, the forerunner to the PWD, on November 5, 1812. According to this report, the installation of the wooden pipes began in October of 1811 and one year later the system was complete. When finished, it was, moreover, one of the finest examples of modern engineering to be found in the U.S. in the 19th century. The pipes discovered at Spruce Street were sections of pine some 10 feet long with a 4 to 6 inch hole drilled through the center of each log. Together they would have formed a vital piece of infrastructure designed to carry water from a nearby hill to the outer reaches of the city. Before the 19th century, Philadelphia's public water had been supplied by wells in the yards of houses. However, this was considered unhygienic, particularly as they were often in the same location as latrine facilities. Wanting to safeguard the health of the city's residents then, the local government ordered the construction of a new system. Consequently, in 1801, architect Benjamin Latrobe devised a groundbreaking new design. Amazingly, it used two steam-powered pumps to draw water up from the city's Scheichel River. The water was then stored in tanks at the Center Square Waterworks. But how did the water travel from there to homes and businesses across the city? Well, the answer is remarkably simple, using nothing more than gravity. Water was forced along a network of pipes that would eventually stretch as far as 45 miles. Yet while the new system may have been one of the best that the U.S. had ever seen, it was not without controversies. In scenes that echo municipal squabbles today, residents were reportedly unhappy about the expense. The old newspapers were full of complaints about how much it was costing, said Levin. In any event, by the time that the system was operational in October of 1812, residents of Philadelphia had two choices. They could either visit a communal standpipe and fill up their buckets with water or pay to connect to the mains. So for around $5 a year apiece, they could enjoy the luxury of their own private faucets. Latrobe's system was used for almost 20 years before technology transformed Philadelphia's water supply once again. In 1831, the city laid cast iron pipes to replace the wooden ones. What's more, some of these have lasted almost two centuries. Thankfully, thanks to Snell and Levin, relics that could so easily have been cast aside have been saved.
and although large sections of the pipe had sadly rotted away, the PWD have moved the remainder to a safe location. In the future then, the department hopes to be able to use them for educational purposes. Snell, meanwhile, is just happy that she managed to be in the right place at the right time. It's funny because I was annoyed that the bike lane was blocked, so I was walking my bike on the sidewalk and almost went right by them. She said in a May 2017 interview with Philly Watersheds, the website of the PWD. I'm glad I could call attention to this little piece of our history.